Welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to add the next 20 creature cards with a mana value of 1 into our Momir Vig Cube. What's up, MTGBC? That is the MTG Burgeoning Community. Welcome back to another installment in our ongoing Momir Vig Cube series. Now, if you've forgotten what this series is all about, or need a refresher, or have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, you can search in the description below for a link to our introduction to Momir Vig. Additionally, you can click the link to Cube Cobra and see the entirety of the contents of the cube right now. So let's get to it. Another 20 cards with a mana value of one entering into our Momir Vig Cube. And the first card we're talking about is Grim Initiate. It is a 1-1 one, one zombie warrior with first strike. That first strike is going to be key if this is the first creature you summon to your side of the battlefield. When it dies, we get to amass one. And to amass one means we're going to create an army creature token and put a plus one plus one counter on it. As long as we don't already have a zombie army creature token. And chances are we probably won't because this is most likely going to be the first creature summoned to your side of the battlefield. Any creatures that can make additional creatures in any way should be highly coveted in a format where only creatures exist. Grim Initiate is entry number one in this video. Number two, sticking with Mono Red, we have Grim Lava Mancer. It's a 1 1 human wizard. We can pay a red mana, tap it, and exile two cards from our graveyard to have Grim Lava Mancer deal two damage to any target. The only cards in our graveyard will be lands because we have to discard a land each time we summon a creature from the Momir Vig Cube. Having removal like this, although it's only two damage to creatures, should be highly prioritized ties in a format that is absent instant and sorcery spells. And basically, Griv Lava Mancer is going to only work if you have that red mana in your deck. So MTGBC, make sure you've got mountains in your basic land in your basic land deck so that you can activate its activated ability. All right, creature card number three, we're going mono blue. This time we're going to Grixis Illusionist. It's a 1-1. One, one. We're going to tap and target land we control becomes the basic land type of our choice until end of turn. This will help us to fix the mana so that we can activate abilities like Grim Lava Mancer over there if we are without a mountain on our side of the battlefield. We can turn Grixis Illusionist sideways and make one of our lands a mountain and then use it to activate Grim Lava Mancer's ability. We're going from mono red to mono blue to mono green with groundskeeper. A 1-1 one, one human druid, we pay one in a green, and we can return a basic land from our graveyard to our hand. Again, make sure you've got those forest cards in your basic library. I'm sorry, make sure you have those make sure you have those basic forest lands in your library because this will be a great way to get those lands that we must discard each time we summon a creature from the Momir Vig Cube, get it back into our hand, and then use that same land to keep discarding and keep summoning those creatures. Alright, back to mono red as we make the one quarter mark. We have Hall Monitor, a 1-1 with haste, pay one in red, tap it, and target creature can't block this turn. Hall Monitor is all about the offensive. If this is the first creature summoned to the Momir Vig battlefield, then you better believe it's going to deal first blood in that game. And then later on, this acts as a combat shenaniganer. Number six, we're going colorless this time with Heapdow. It's a 1-1 one, one that we can sacrifice to remove target card in a graveyard from the game. Maybe Groundskeeper is trying to return some kind of specific basic land from the graveyard to the owner's hand that we can sacrifice Heapdow and prevent that from happening. Back to Mono Blue, and this time we have Hedron Crab. 
O2, so it's not going to deal much damage on the offensive front. However, with that landfall mechanic, whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can have target player put the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. So an O2 for just the cost of one mana, it can act as a, as a decent chump blocker for the early turns of the game. And the mill effect is not going to be overly powerful in a format where the entire library is comprised of basic lands. This is one of the ongoing themes of the Momir Vig Cube. Not every creature in it is uber powerful. All right, next we go our first mono white creature number eight, and we have Herald of Anafenza, a one two with the Outlast mechanic. At sorcery speed, we can pay two and a white. We can tap. Herald of Anafenza and put a plus one plus one counter on it. So make sure you have those white mana sources in your basic land deck. Whenever we activate Herald of Anafenza's Outlast ability, we create a 1 1 white warrior creature token, and that is beyond valuable in a format that is all creatures. Any creature that can make additional creatures should be highly prioritized. Next up, in another mono green edition, we have Hex Drinker. This has the leveled up mechanic. It hits the field as a 2 1. We can level up by paying one generic mana to put a level counter on this, but we can only level up as a sorcery. Once this has three to seven level up counters, it has protection from instants, which in Momir Vig is absolutely meaningless because there are no instants in this format. However, once we get to 8+, plus, it then has protection from everything, and it moves from a 4-4 to a 6-6. Six, six. So with the overall investment of 9 total mana into Hex Drinker over a series of turns, or maybe just one turn if you're really, really lucky, you get a 6-6 six, six with protection from everything. This could end the game quickly if it's on the battlefield long enough, particularly because we can turn it sideways for 6 unblockable damage. Hitting the halfway point here, creature card number 10, we have Hex Parasite, a 1-1 one, one artifact creature. It is an insect. It has X and the black Phyrexian mana symbol. We can pay that to activate X Parasite's activated ability. And when we do, we can remove up to X counters from target permanent. And for each counter removed this way, Hex Parasite gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So this would be very, very useful against any creatures that have tons of plus one, plus one counters on them, or perhaps some keyword mechanic counters. Hex Parasite presents the ability to act as removal in a in a format that is sans removal spells. All right, beginning the second half of this video, we have Honored Hierarch, a 1-1 with the Renown mechanic. When this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it's not Renowned, we put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it becomes Renowned. Also keep in mind that we do not have to deal the combat damage in order to get a plus one, plus one counter on this creature to make it Renowned. If we have an outside peripheral effect that puts a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, we can do so and still have it be Renowned. Once Honored Hierarch is renowned, it has Vigilance, and we can tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Getting this creature into play early in a game of Momir Vig can help to serve the function of ramping out more powerful creatures ahead of curve if we can get that plus one plus one counter on it. Creature number 12, we have Hunted... Ghoul, our first mono black of this series, our first mono black creature of this video. It's a one two and it can't block humans. That's it. Just just a one two. Can't block humans. So if you have a if you're sitting across from someone who summoned a human and you've got haunted ghoul, you're not blocking that creature. All right, number 13, we are moving to another colorless edition, Ice Hide Golem. It's a two two. That's it. You're summoning a two two. Another mono green, we have Ignoble Hierarch. Zero one with the exalted mechanic, which means if whenever a creature we control attacks alone, 
That creature will get plus one, plus one until end of turn. A very valuable combat chicanery mechanic. However, more importantly for this format, however, may be Ignoble Hierarch's ability to provide a black, red, or green mana. This mana can be used to smooth out our activated abilities among creatures we control and also can serve as ramp as a way in which to get more powerful creatures on our side of the battlefield way ahead of curve. Number 15, we're going back to mono blue and we have Image Crafter. It's a 1 1 wizard. We can tap it to choose a creature type other than Legend or Wall, and target creature's type becomes that type until end of turn. If you've been keeping up with the Momir Vig Cube series so far, you'll realize that there are a lot of tribal synergies woven throughout the cube so far. Image Crafter will help to make sure that those synergies become a little more stronger by its ability to make one of our creatures one of those tribal types. All right, number 16, we have Indulgent Aristocrat, a 1-1 one, one lifelinker. We can pay two and sacrifice a creature to put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire we control. Great foreshadowing here when we were talking about Image Crafter, because this is one of the many tribes where we have some synergy throughout the cube. Indulgent Aristocrat can really make those vampires useful as they get bigger and bigger by sacrificing any creature. Next up, another colorless edition, we have Inquisitive Puppet. It's a 0-2, and when it ETBs, we can scry one. Now, in a, in a format like Momir Vig, the scry ability may not be seen as uber valuable here. However, if we have, you know, if we're trying to make sure that we maximize the colors across the lands that we're putting onto the battlefield, then it will be important to look at that top card and see, oh, geez, is this our fourth island? Or can we put this on the bottom of our library and hope to draw our first planes? Uh, and as an additional bonus to this creature, even though we're not going to get much on the attack phase since it's only an 0-2, we can exile Inquisitive Puppet to create a 1-1 white human creature token. So this comes down, helps to settle the top of our library somewhat, can act as an early game blocker, a mid to late game chump blocker, and replaces itself with a 1-1 human creature token. As we've driven the point home multiple times in this video alone, any creatures that can create creatures in a format driven by creatures should be highly prioritized. An Inquisitive Puppet is one of those examples. Next card, we're going back to Mono Red, and we have Intimidator Initiate. It's a 1-1, and whenever a player casts a red spell, we may pay one. And if we do, target creature can't block this turn. So this has some potential political machinations, particularly if we have some mana up and around the table some cre some opponent randomly casts a red creature spell from the Momir Vig Cube, we can pay that one and make one other opponent's creature unable to block. That could open up that opponent to some vulnerable defense, and then that other opponent could swoop in and deal some combat damage. Remember, we only start with 24 life in Momir Vig, so it's not out of the realm of a, of a, it's not out of the realm of reason to think that any amount of damage that we can get in from an unblockable standpoint, we should take full advantage of that. All right, not card number 19. We're going mono white once more. We have Isamaru Hound of Konda. Not much to talk about here. You get a two-two. That's it, a two-two. Very, very good investment. This is the Ice Hide Golem. Pretty much no difference there. All right, creature card number 20, and the last we'll talk about in this video, we have Jace's Phantasm, a 1 1 flyer. However, it gets plus 4 plus 4 if an opponent has 10 or more cards in their graveyard. Now, in Momir Vig, each time you summon a creature from the Momir Vig cube and you create a copy of that, you must discard a you must discard a land card in order to do that. So we're really looking for some opponent to get at least 10 lands into the graveyard in order for Jace's Phantasm to get plus four plus four. It's possible, but seems unlikely. So what we really have here is an early game evasive attacker that can start our opponent's life ticking southward each time we send it into combat. 
All right, I'm TGBC. There we have it. 20 more creatures for the Momir Vig Cube. Let me know in the comment section below which were your favorites. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.